Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Bless the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Life in Christ Christian Broadcast. My name is Gerald Walton, and I am your host, and I am the pastor and the elder at New Life in Christ Christian Center, where you are uh, welcome to join us and be with us. If you'd like to know more information about us, uh, you can call us at 513-257-9121, or you can email us at newlifeinchristcc at yahoo.com. Uh, this broadcast, the purpose for this broadcast is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ and bless his holy name. So we are grateful to have you to be with us today on this episode. Uh, we thank God for the viewers and our blessings. We send out blessings to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we say grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, today we're gonna to have a great day because this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Why are we rejoicing? Because he saved us, because he delivered us, because he healed us, because he redeemed us, hallelujah, and because he's our provider, he's our vindicator, he's our protector, he is our all and all. So that's why we rejoice in this day. Amen. To wake up to see a day where God has finished his work and done his work in our lives. And we're grateful and we're walking in the newness of Christ. Amen. Well, before we start, uh, I'd like to always give an encouraging word. And uh, I'll give this word. Uh, from the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. So I pray to God that you acknowledge him so that he can direct your path each and every day, and during the day as well. Amen? Well, we have a great message for you today. I believe it will lift you up and stir you up and keep you focused. Amen. That's the main thing. Stay focused. Amen. So today's message, uh, but before we go on to today's message, we're going to pray. I'm going to read a prayer, and I'm going to believe God with you, which should be in agreement. I want you to be in agreement with me. And I pray that you receive this prayer. It's taken from Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 14, it says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, and that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and that ye be rooted and grounded in love and that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and that you may know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, and that you might be filled with 
all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all what that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. Amen. May God bless you with that prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll move right on to the message. Uh, I think, well, I believe this will bless you with all my heart. Um, and today's message is entitled, The Name of Jesus. The Name of Jesus. Now, when we say the name of Jesus, for clarity, the name of Jesus, the Christ. Uh, amen. So, the name of Jesus uh, the Bible says every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. So he's Lord of all. He's Lord of Lords. And also I might add that he's King of Kings. Amen. And the Lord of Lords. Amen. So uh, it was prophesied that Jesus would come. So let's go and do a little background about the Jesus, God's plan for Jesus for our lives. In Isaiah, if we go to Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, and we'll read there, and we can understand who Jesus Christ is, the name of Jesus, and how important it is for us to believe in that name. So in Isaiah 9, Verse 6 and 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, the name of Jesus, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So we see Jesus being prophesied and that he uh, came as a child and that he became a son. And then as a son, uh, it, re it remembers or it reminds us that the government is upon his shoulders, the Lord Jesus, the government. And uh, on his shoulders, they, they, they also, we, they will call him, or he is called, Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. So we get the word Jesus, and we find out that he is, uh, he is a wonderful counselor. He's the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father. Amen. And if we go to Hebrews 12 about the name of Jesus and go to 12 verse 2 Hebrews 12 verse 2 and we read as follows because this message is about lifting up the name of Jesus and knowing the name of Jesus what it means to us who believe amen so in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 it reads as follows Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Amen. So 
we see here Jesus. <coughs> he is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. That's, that's so important for us to realize that. And then if we go to Revelation, excuse me, <coughs> Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 in Revelation. Let's read there. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So the name of Jesus is the Almighty God. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And we go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, we read the name of Jesus, why it's so important to us to receive, to believe, and to receive, and to give thanks and praise. God's only begotten Son. John 3, 16 even says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. <coughs> Excuse me that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That name is Jesus Christ, his son. And Christ Jesus means Emmanuel, God with us in the Greek. Amen. And Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah. So we put that name together and that's who he is. It's in the word. It's right there in the Word, the Word of God, even the Word of God. But in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, we're going to spend some time in the Word today. hope you have your Bibles and follow along with me. Colossians 2 and 10, it reads as follows. And we are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in Christ who is the head of all principality and power. You see, Jesus is the head of the church. He's the head of the body, Jesus Christ. And he is the head of all principality and power. And we're complete in him. That means we're engrafted in him. Hallelujah. When you receive God's gift to mankind, his son, Jesus Christ, then he comes in. And takes out the old and brings in the new. He brings in himself. He was our sin substitute. He took the sins of the world. Whether the world believes or not. But those to whom many have received him. John chapter 1 verse 12. To him he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. I love the name of Jesus, and I'm going to lift him up and give him praise and learn of him. Hallelujah. The Bible says, learn of him. Take his yoke for, and learn of him, for his burden is light. For his, his burden is light. And let's just go there <laughs> because it, uh, it explains why you need to come to Jesus. Uh, and I believe that's uh, in uh, Mark. Let's see. We find it here. Oh, Matthew eleven twenty nine. Um, excuse me. Matthew eleven twenty nine. And it reads as follows. Uh, twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that are that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. This is Jesus speaking. Whomsoever will, let him come. The Lord is calling those who have not received Christ to come. And, and he's saying here, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Heavy laden means stressed out, worn down. But if you come and learn of him, he's going to give you rest and then Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So 
So Jesus is giving an invitation to learn of him and connect with him and let him walk with you and let him share with you about life, life eternal, amen, and the love of the Father that the Father has for all mankind. Amen. So this is why the name Jesus is so important. He is Savior. He is Healer. He is Deliverer. Amen. So that's why we, we receive that gift, who's Jesus, who is Jesus Christ from the Father. And, to, and when we receive, we receive an eternal life and we receive a new life in Christ. Amen. In Matthew 12, stay right there, Matthew uh, chapter 1 and Matthew verse 21, the importance of Jesus because he was prophesied in Isaiah uh, chapter 9 verse 6 through 7. But here the birth of Christ uh, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 reads as follows. And he and she, amen, referring to Mary and Joseph, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, amen, for he shall save his people from their sins, amen. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord, by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. So Jesus, the name of Jesus means Emmanuel, God is with us when he was walking in the earth. That's what it meant. And uh, the revelation of Jesus comes even clearer as you go through the scriptures. Amen. Amen. And you find out uh, what redemption means, being redeemed by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony and how he redeemed us, rescued us and saved us from our sins. For whom the son set free, they're free indeed. And then we see uh, God's love gift to mankind in John 3, 16. Let's go there. John chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. His Son is Jesus Christ. And he sent his Son to die for our sins. Amen that we may have life and life more abundantly, but also that we may walk in the perfect love of God. We see there's no fear in, in God's perfect love. So God wants us to receive his love, which is his gift to us, his spirit, his son, and then he wants us to walk in love. Amen. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love power, and of a sound mind. God's love is referred to perfect love, and it casts out fear. That's for somebody. That's somebody listening. Uh, because perfect love, there's no fear in perfect love. And when God gives you his love, it is the greatest. Amen. And it conquered fear on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he conquered fear it conquered shame, it conquered uh, 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 sickness, disease, it conquered all imaginable different kinds of sins. Amen. So when you receive him, then he takes away that, and then he comes in, and he lives on the inside of you. And then you must learn from him living on the inside. That's, that's called relationship. The spirit of Christ in you. The hope of glory. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Full of love and grace and truth. Amen. So that name Jesus 
uh, means salvation, deliverance, freedom, and healing. Salvation is wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. God desires, or God desires to bless your spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved blameless before the coming of the Lord. God wants your, your mind, which is your soul, to have peace and think on things that are honest, just, pure, and lovely, and of a good report. God wants your spirit with your heart. He wants your heart to, to be full of love and full of him. And then he wants us to take care of our bodies because this is the temple of the Lord, not no brick building or a pretty building. The building is the Lord and the building and the builder is Jesus. Let him build you up. Let him encourage you. Let him strengthen you. Let him guide you and lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. But this is the temple. So spirit, soul, and body, God desires that our spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless before the return of Jesus. So salvation is wholeness, completeness in God. And you grow by the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You come into your rightful inheritance when you learn from Jesus. Amen. That name. Amen. Above all names. Amen. And if we go to Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Mm, Acts 4, verse 12. Amen. And we're going to learn some more about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let the saints say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it reads as follows. It says here, Neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no other name. There's no other Gandhi, Allah, uh, any other name you want to think of, uh, Buddha. There is no other name to be saved but the name of Jesus, the Christ. So that name is, is above every other name. Amen. And that name, he's the author and finisher of our faith. And to whom many have received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The name of Jesus, that is. Amen. So in Romans 10, 9 and 10, he said, well, how, how can I make him my Lord and Savior? Well, I'm going to share Romans 10, 9 and 10 with you to help you understand the significance of Jesus being in your life. It's not a religious thing where you go every Sunday or every other Sunday or go one Sunday and you, and you wear your best clothes. and, and uh, It's a relationship. And out of the relationship, you understand the assembling together. And then you understand you represent the family of God, the people of God, the nation of God. So you assemble because he commands us to. But it's not a... a, a full of uh, show. It's full of love. The house of God is to be full of love and mercy and grace and truth and faith, faith toward God and hearing from the Father, the Father's love to his children and him showing us how to occupy till he comes. Well, Romans 10, 9 and 10, it reads here, Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with my mouth, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, the name Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So that name, there's no other name to be saved but by that name. And this is, this is how and this is why. Because he is Lord. 
and Savior. He was sent to save people from their sins, the whole world, the whole wide world, not just America, the whole wide world. Amen. And it says that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And verse 13 says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Jesus is Lord. Amen. So that's the significance and the importance of knowing and understanding that name, the name of Jesus. Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Jesus, the Savior. Jesus, the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, the Redeemer. Hallelujah. The healer, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus who sets captives free and opens the prison doors, hallelujah. The one that, that, that we are to uh, preach in uh, the acceptable year in the return of our Lord, that name Jesus, amen. All power and all authority has been given to the name of Jesus Christ. He has all power and authority. He's the head of all principality and power. Amen. He is head of everything, head over everything, head over all principalities and powers. But here, the authority is in that name. And that's why it's so special that if you need to be saved, call on the name of Jesus and save you with all your heart. You call on that name with all your heart. Amen. You be uh, truthful to yourself and sincere to God and call on the name and he'll save you. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has, has, uh, has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Glory to God. Amen. But if we see in Matthew, go to Matthew, we learn about the authority that he has. It's been given to him by the Father. And we read here in uh, Matthew 28, praise the Lord. And this is how we live, under the authority of Christ. And this is how we are covered by uh, living under the obedience of Christ, uh, what he has taught and what he has de, uh, de, 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 uh, instructed us to do, which is the commandments. He said, obey the commandments and live. Amen. Commandments are not grievous. They're for our protection and blessing. Amen. And another commandment is love one another. Amen. But here, Matthew 28, verse 18, it says here, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So all power has been given to Jesus in heaven and in earth. Amen. So realizing that, then uh, he's commissioning the believer the child of God in verse 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So all power has been given to Jesus in, in heaven and in earth. And his father has given him that authority and that power. And he sits on the right hand of the father, full of uh, grace and truth. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. Amen. And if we look in Romans, go to Romans 14, verse 11. I just want to share with you uh, the name of Jesus and that name 
is to be elevated and exalted and esteemed above any other name because that's the only name where you can be saved by. And that's the way the Father says it so. And now, if we go to Romans 14, verse 11, and it reads as follows. Amen. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall, shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Every. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Amen. So, oh my goodness, that's a blessing. Is that a blessing or is that a blessing? And we also pray in the name of Jesus. In John 16, verse 26 through 28, where it reads, at that day ye shall ask in my name, and I shall, I shall not say unto you that I will pray to the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye, ha ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from the Father. I came forth from the Father, and I am come into the world again. I leave the world, and I go to the Father. So Jesus is, teaches the disciples to pray to the Father in his name. But there, uh, there's more to it in verse 26 to 28. It says, at, the, at that day ye shall ask in my name, and I, shall not, uh, and I shall say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came out from the Father. I came forth from the Father, and I am coming to the world again, to the world. Again, I leave the world, and I go to the Father, and then he's going to return. So that name is above every name. That name means everything to us. He's our all in all. And I pray that this blessed you, uh, the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. The purpose, the, the meaning of the name, the purpose of the name, and that name is to be highly exalted and esteemed. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. He is the Lamb of God. He was slain for the whole world. Amen. All you must do is believe and receive and then walk in the newness of life. I pray that prayer. Father God, that those who are viewing, that they will believe and receive the gift of God, Jesus Christ, into their hearts. And then they will walk in the newness of Christ. For if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. May they come into the newness of you, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Well, have a blessed day. Thanks for being with us today. We wish above all things a new life in Christ Christian Center. We wish above all things that you prosper, be in good health even as your soul prosper. Have a blessed day and keep your mind on him. He'll keep you in perfect peace. In the name of Jesus. Have a blessed day.